Hello there, today I will walk you through getting started with Tattoo Web. If you're new to Tattoo Web, have a look at our task library first to see whether a task similar to what you need already exists. Let's say we want to run a flanker task, a commonly used cognitive control task. The documentation of each task describes the task and contains a demo. Click on the demo to see whether the task could be the basis for your own experiment. The task starts with an instruction followed by a countdown. The task is currently set to counted trials completed, provide visual feedback on the correctness of each response and shows a timer that counts down the time for responding. You can customize this flanker task by changing the module, the task properties or replacing the instructions and stimuli. You can download an example stimuli file from the documentation and use it as a basis for creating your own stimuli. For now, let's download the example module to customize the module and task properties. If you don't have one yet, you need to create an account with developer access. Once you have verified your email address, you can log in. Once you're logged in, click on the editor tab. And if you don't see one, that means your user account has no developer access yet. So in that case, you need to either create a new account or get in touch with us so that we can upgrade your existing account. Click on Open to load the module and click on Edit to view the module. The first thing you'll see are the general settings. Here you can change the name of the module, the author and change the label of the module that will be printed in the output. You can choose whether you want to allow for aborting the task by pressing the escape key, whether the module is presented in full screen, and whether you want the data to be uploaded to analytics or downloaded or both. I would recommend to always tick the upload option and both options in case you want your participants to be able to access the data as well. Choose the delimiter and format of your choice for the exported data. Note these small info icons. Hover over them with your mouse to learn more about the option. You can also download the module file to be stored and or shared with others. The module itself is constructed as a list of elements. You can navigate through that structure by clicking on the elements. The first element here is the overarching list element that contains so-called child elements and determines the order in which they will be executed. The child elements are the instruction, the countdown and the flanker task itself. Because we want these three elements to be presented in this exact order, we choose sequential here. The first child element is the tattoo instruction executable. I will show you a little later how to add more executables. The top part are channel settings that are available for all executables. These are less relevant here for the instructions, so I'll walk you through them once we get to the tattoo choice reaction executable below. The custom properties are specific to each executable and they are described in the documentation. For now, let's move to the countdown executable. The countdown executable has three properties here. The number from which the countdown starts, the interval in milliseconds between each number and the text shown once the countdown reaches zero. Note that the tattoo choice reaction executable is nested in a list element. This is because, different to the other executables, we want to repeat this one multiple times because we want to present multiple trials. So here we want to present, let's say, 20 trials, so we set the iterations to 20. This module also has a trial count handler, which helps to count the number of iterations so that we can display that counter that you've seen. Let's go through those executable settings now. The Tattoo Choice Reaction Executable is super versatile as it simply presents a stimulus centrally on the screen and records reaction times in key and mouse responses. It's an executable that works perfectly for something like a flanker task. First we choose a descriptive name here. For executables that record data, this name will be visible in the data export. You can set a fixation cross that is shown before each trial and a blank interval that is shown after each trial. The status panel is what you see at the top on the screen when you run the executable. And there you can set a visual feedback that's a thumbs up or thumbs down that you've seen, 
a trial counter, a timer, and a current level. The level is really only relevant in when you use tasks that are adaptive to performance, for example, in cognitive training studies. Take a look at our digit memory span training task in the task library if you're interested in seeing an example. You can also choose to hide the mouse cursor. The specific properties are described in more detail on the documentation page of the Flanker task, so have a look there. The stimuli path sets the location where the stimuli are stored and the documentation tells you where to find those stimuli. Here it tells us that the location is the project tool stimuli and the type is stimuli. It also states the file name of the stimuli file and that is choice flanker arrows CSV, which we need to enter. So let's change things up a little bit. For example, let's present the stimuli until participants respond. To do that, we have to disable the timer. If we don't use a timer, it doesn't make sense anymore to display the visual timer. So let's get rid of that too. Let's say we also want to add an instruction page at the end of the experiment to let our participants know they have completed all the trials. To do so, we need to add another child element. Let's go to the task list and click on Add Child. Because we don't want to set multiple iterations or handlers, we don't need a list element here. We can instead directly add an executable. This will be added to the end of the task list but you can use the up and down button to move the executable to the position in the sequence where you want it to appear. Here, we are happy to leave it at the end of our module. We'll now set the type of executable. To find out which project contains the instruction executable, let's have a look at the documentation again. Let's go to the task library and click on instruction. And the documentation here tells us that the project is Tattoo and the executable type is Tattoo instruction. So select the project and the executable and press save. Let's name this end instruction. As the documentation says, we can only add HTML pages or images, but you can only add HTML pages that are hosted on Tattoo Web for security reasons. So you can't add any HTML pages from external resources. But we can do that for images. Have a look at our documentation to see how you can use free services such as Cloudinary to host your stimuli and instruction images. Um, you can also host materials on Tattoo Web, but please have a look at our FAQ to see how that is done. Let's add an image from an external resource here. In the list of projects, scroll down to the bottom for external resource and then enter the full URL to your image and save. Let's also reduce the number of trials to just five and then press save and exit to finish customizing the module. Now let's try out our module by clicking on test. Really important here is that this testing button is really only for development and not for the actual data collection. I'll show you in a minute how you can publish your module for data collection. In Tattoo Web, all the stimuli and instructions are downloaded before the module actually starts, so it will run on the local machine, which avoids problems with varying internet connections, but it means also that loading the module can sometimes take a little while if you have a very large number of image materials. So you can see that there is no timer anymore, and we present an image at the end of the module thanking our participants. You can check the data output from testing your module by clicking on export. Data are saved in CSV format and so can be processed with whatever data analysis software you want to use. The user code is a unique identifier for Tattoo web accounts. To distinguish between participants, you can also use the external ID or XID, ID. And I'll come back to that a little later in this video. The session ID is relevant for multi-session studies where you need to map the data to such different sessions. And the session token is particularly useful for online data collection. So when completing a module, participants will receive this session token that they can then send to the experimenter. And the experimenter can then match the session token against the data to verify uh, that people have actually completed this module and compensate them. Have a look at our documentation under using Tattoo Web to learn more about how to use Tattoo Web with Amazon Mechanical Turk.
The trial ID refers to the trial number and the executable ID is the name we provided for the Tattool Choice Reaction Executable. If session completed is 1, that session has been completed. Uh, note that if you allow for aborting the experiment of the escape key, the session will be counted as completed even if the participant pressed escape. So we didn't use any different conditions here, so there are no values in this column. Conditions are set on the list element level and they can be used to execute that list only if that condition is met. So you can use that condition when disseminating your module, for example, I'll show you that in a bit. And if you program your own tasks, you can use the condition to execute different parts of your code. The next couple of columns are specific to this particular executable. And the most critical ones here are the reaction time in milliseconds, the score, with one reflecting a correct response and zero a wrong response, and the stimulus type, so here that is the flanker congruency manipulation, for example. You'll also find the response given by the participant, the stimulus presented, and what would have been the correct response. So once you are happy with the module, you can move it to the repository, that is, you make it available to be published. You can choose to make it public, which means anyone logging in to Tattoo Web will be able to see it, or you can just keep it private so that only you and invited participants can see it. Let's set this one to private. Now publish the module by clicking on the green button. The best way to disseminate your module is to just share its URL. Um, so click on show URL and you can just share that as it is, or you can add an X ID. Let me show you. Let's copy and paste the URL into your browser and then we'll add an X ID called test. You can also add a condition here by adding an ampersand C equals and a condition name, let's say group one. This is how it will look like for the participants and then after uh, they have completed the trials, they will receive the session token and they can copy that and then send it to you, for example. You can then access the data via the analytics tab. That only works if you have ticked the box to upload the data. Here you can see the external ID that we added to the URL and the session token we received at the end of the experiment. When you click on that magnifying glass here, you can check when the participants did the experiment, the number of trials they completed, and under status, whether that session is completed. You can download the data by clicking this button. And in the data, you can also see the XID ID as well as the condition. You can also download all data at once and delete single data files or all data files, but be careful here because once you've deleted them, the data will be gone for good. So this is really all you need to know for running experiments and you don't need any programming skills for doing that. Read through our Using the Tool Web documentation to learn more about each tab and those functions that we didn't cover in the video and take a look at our FAQ. Browse through the task library to see what other tasks are available. And as you can replace the malign instructions, these tasks really cover a wide range of experimental paradigms. So it's pretty likely that what you want to do uh, can be done with some of those tasks here. If you need other paradigms though, well, um, Tattoo Web is open source and so it offers the full flexibility. That means you can create your own tasks with your own Tattoo Web installation. You can work through this tutorial in the development section of the documentation here to learn how to program that flanker task that we just used. It's pretty straightforward, but it will require some basic knowledge of JavaScript and HTML. So if you have never used JavaScript before, I would recommend uh, going through some online tutorials. All executables can be found on GitHub. So just navigate to download and click on the GitHub link and feel free to modify or extend them to suit your own needs. If you create any new tasks that you think could be useful for others, please get in touch and we'll be happy to um, have a look at them and add them to the task library. So this concludes this video. Please get in touch if you have any questions on GitHub via email to info at tattool.ch or on Twitter at tattool underscore ch.
Thanks for watching.